In this video, we're gonna set up our Firestore collection in Flutterflow. But before that, we need to figure out what collections of data we need, and then inside those collections, what fields we need. Now, if you're not familiar with Firestore in Firebase, it is structured by collections of documents. And each of those documents has the fields or properties that we set up here. So because we already set up authentication, we've got this users collection. And each document inside the users collection will have these fields. So every user will have an email, a display name, a photo URL, etc. And each of these fields are of one data type. That is what kind of data it is. And you can see all the data types that Flutterflow supports in here. Now, why do you have these data types? Well, it's to ensure type safety. Well, what does that mean? When you're using data in your app, you work with different types of data in different ways. So let's say you're working with a string, that's just a text, but you try to run an operation on it like addition, that is an operation that only works on numbers like integers or doubles. Well, that's not gonna work and it could potentially crash your app. So Flutterflow takes care of this problem for you by enforcing types. Okay, so let's get out of here and let's figure out the structure of our data. And to do that, we have to look at our design. So what you wanna think about are what are the main buckets of information, of data that you're gonna need? And then inside each one of those buckets, what fields or what properties do you need? You can think about collections as spreadsheets and the fields as the column headers. And then each row is a new record, a new entry. So with users, each row would be a new user. Okay, so we've already got a users collection. What other type of collection are we gonna need for a to-do app? Well, we're probably gonna need to-dos. So we'll need a tasks collection, great. And what fields do we need in there? Well, let's zoom in here and see what fields we are working with. So here are our task details, and that probably seems like a good place to start. So we have the task itself right here, and we could call that the task title. And then we have details if we want some more information about it. And that looks like all the fields we need. But there's actually more fields because some fields relate very directly to things that you see, but other fields are more utilitarian. That is they're doing something and not just showing something. For instance, over here, we have two different screens, ones for tasks that are not done and another screen for the tasks that are done. So that's a piece of data we need to track. Okay, so what kind of value would be good for that? And here you have a decision. So let's jump back into Flutterflow and look at our data types again and figure this out. Let's open this up here and here are all our data types. So which could we use? Well, you have a bunch of different options, but when you're choosing the data type, while many would work, you wanna choose the one with the closest similarity to what you're using it for. What do I mean by that? Well, for a task completed action, there are only two values that it could possibly have have, either it's not completed or it is completed. So if there were some data type that only had two values, that would be helpful because a string can have millions or billions of values because it's just text. Same with integers. But Booleans right here is a perfect candidate because it can only be true or false. And so we should have a field called completed. And if it is completed, it'll be set to true and if not false. Remember, this isn't the string or the text true or false. It is a different kind of value called a Boolean. Okay, let's see what else we need. Well, when we're creating this list, what order will these to-dos be listed? Well, presumably we want the most recent ones at the top in both of these lists going back in the future. Okay, so we need some way to track that. Our to-dos need some sort of property that we can sort this list by. What field would be good for that? Well, let's take a look. And down here, we've got this date time data type, and that would be perfect. We've got one more to do. Now, for each of our tasks, these tasks will be owned by a user. And once again, we need to do that with some property. And what property would that be? Well, that would be a document reference. Remember, Firestore is a collection of documents, so each user will have a document. So in our tasks collection, each 
task will have a reference to a user. That's how we'll display each user's task and not another user. Okay, so that's everything that we're gonna need. So let's get the big picture of this. Let's see a diagram. All right, so here it is. Here's the structure of our data. You'll most often hear this called a data model. And these are helpful to create before you set up your collections in Flutterflow. And there are a lot of tools that you can use to do these. For instance, Lucid Charts, or you could just scribble it on a piece of paper. And if you're having trouble, this is a perfect use case for an LLM like ChatGPT or Gemini. You can just tell it that you need help with your data model for Firestore and explain your app and it'll give you a great data model. All right, so here it is. We've got two collections, a user's collection and a task collection with all the fields and the data types that we're gonna be setting up. And you can see these are connected through a document reference. All right, last step, let's set it up in Flutterflow. To set up a new collection, you want to come up here and say plus, we'll call it tasks and create. We're going to start from scratch here and our first field will be title and it will be the data type string and make sure you check it off to accept it. Next up, we've got details that will also be a string and accept. Then we'll have our completed field that will be of type boolean, so that's true or false. Next, we've got our user user, and that's of type document reference. Then we get this new drop down, which we have to say which collection we're referencing, and we're referencing users, and accept that. And then finally, we have our created date time and accept that. And that's it. Our data modeling is done. Our database is structured correctly, and we're ready to start building.